you mentioned quantum mechanics, mm -hmm. and we're, we're talking about cosmic scale objects. You've talked about that the evolution of astrophysical disks can be modeled with uh, Schrodinger's equation. I sure did. Wh why? <laughs> it's like, how does quantum mechanics uh, become relevant at when you uh, consider the evolution of objects in the solar system? Yeah. Well, let me take a take a step back and just say, it. like, I remember being, you know, utterly confused by quantum mechanics when when I first learned it. And the Schrodinger equation, which is kind of the parent equation of, of that whole field, you know, seems to come out of nowhere, right? The way that, uh, the way that I was sort of explaining, I remember asking, you know, my professor, I was like, but, but where does it come from? Is that like, well, it's just like, don't worry about it and just like calculate the hydrogen, you know, energy levels, right? So it's like, I could do all the problems. I just did not have any intuition for, for where this parent, you know, super important equation came from. Now down the line, I was remember I was preparing for my own lecture and I was trying to understand how waves um, travel in self-gravitating disks. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, again, there's a very broad theory that's already developed, but I was looking for some simpler way to explain it really for the purposes of teaching class. And so I, I thought, okay, what if I just imagine a disk as an infinite uh, number of concentric circles, right? That interact with the, with each other gravitationally. That's a problem in some sense that um, I can solve using methods from like the late 1700s. Right? Mm -hmm. so I can write down Hamiltonian. Well, I can write down the energy function basically of their their interactions, and what I found is that when you take the continuum limit, when you go from discrete circles that are talking to each other gravitationally to a continuum disk, suddenly this gravitational interaction among them, right, the, the governing equation becomes the Schrodinger equation. Yeah. And I had to think about that for a little bit. Did you just unify <laughs> quantum mechanics and gravity? No, this is not the same thing as like, you know, fusing relativity yeah. and quantum mechanics. But it did, uh, it, it did get me thinking a little bit. So the fact that waves in astrophysical disks behave just like wave functions of, of particles, kind of like an interesting analogy, because for me, it's easier to imagine waves traveling through, you know, astrophysical disks or really just sheets of paper. Mm -hmm. And the reason this is um, that analogy exists is because there's actually nothing quantum about the Schrodinger equation. Mm -hmm. The Schrodinger equation is just a wave equation, and all of the interpretation that comes from it is quantum, but the equation itself is not a quantum being. So you can use it to model waves. It's yes. way, It's not turtles. It's waves all the way down. You can pick which level you pick the the wave at. And so it could be at the solar system level that you can use. Right, it. and also it actually provides a, a pretty neat calculational tool because um, it's it's difficult. So we just talked about simulations, but it's difficult to simulate the behavior of astrophysical disks on time scales that are in between a few orbits and their entire evolution. Mm. So it's over a time scale of a few orbits, you have you do a hydrodynamic, you know, simulation, right? You do um, that. Basically, that's something that you can do on a modern computer on a time scale of say a week. Mm -hmm. When it comes to their evolution over their entire lifetime, you don't hope to resolve the orbits. You just kind of hope to understand how the system behaves. Mm -hmm. In between, right? You to get access to that. As it turns out, it's pretty. Um, it's pretty cute. You can use uh, you can use the Schrodinger equation to get the answer rapidly. So it's a calculational tool.